Okay, so I think the problem that people are going to have with uh, my space elevator design, if they have a problem with it at all, is that it's going to use fuel and that it, it by necessity uses fuel. So um, I think that the plan would be that it burns hydrogen and oxygen, since I'm trying to take advantage of the fact that the atmosphere actually gets quite cold quite quickly as you go up it. Um, at 30,000 feet, I think it's about minus 50 up there. It's very, very cold up there. So if you're trying to keep things cold, such as propellant for um, rocket engines, for example, um, yeah, then then you might do worse than sending it up into the atmosphere. Up in like the mesosphere, for instance, it's minus 110 up there or something like that. So if you're trying to keep liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen nice and cold in pipes, then, um, yeah, you could do worse than sending it through the upper atmosphere, I suppose, as a means of trying to do that with some insulation, um, obviously, so it doesn't expand too much. Um, but, yeah, and then um, using dirigibles and jet engines, like balloon stages and jet engines to steer the thing, and all the, as all the stages below the stratosphere, um, which is really quite high up, up to about 170,000 feet is where we can send balloons. So that's actually getting into the early stages of the mesosphere as well, the first kilometer, the first, you know, couple of kilometers of the mesosphere, I think. And um, yeah, we can, we can do that with balloons, but after that we need rocket engines on all the supporting stages. And those will need to burn hydrogen and oxygen um i think as opposed to hydrogen and kerosene uh, sorry oxygen and kerosene because i think kerosene is going would, would freeze in the pipes and we might as well like use hydrogen and oxygen anyway because i want that to be burned for the stages that are actually out in space itself beyond the car line um and i want this this area within the mesosphere because this is the bit that's really troubling me with this design at the moment with the, with the rocket engines. I want the rocket engines just to be providing corrective thrust and to keep it relatively straight. That, that should be their only role within the design. Um, and the stages, the balloon stages in the stratosphere and whatever's beyond the Kármán line in space should both be pulling on the, uh, on the section in the mesosphere so it's relatively taut all the time such that we can just use those rocket engines then to provide corrective thrust, and we're not having to pipe up huge, huge amounts of propellant to keep all this stuff suspended in the upper atmosphere. And um, I think probably in the construction of it, we'll have to lower some stages from space as well. I think, um, yeah, we'll have to, because it should end up really in low Earth orbit, I think, or anchored in low Earth orbit. Because in low Earth orbit, um, we, you need to use some propellant to stay in low Earth orbit. You don't need to use very much, though. I mean, satellites stay up there for years and years, don't they? So, because they, 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 well, they don't, they're just, in essence, falling around the Earth. It's quite a long way from geostationary orbit. And geostationary orbit is really quite a long way from the planet. But it's at the, that point, geostationary orbit, or um, geosynchronous orbit is where the point of highest tensile strength on the cable would be. But um, you need to anchor it in geostationary orbit, which is even further than that. Um, since that's the point where centrifugal forces take over from the force of gravity. So anywhere before then, you're always having to repel a little bit of gravity. But um, in in low Earth orbit and really just sort of above the Kármán line, the further out you go there towards low Earth orbit um, and in low Earth orbit itself, yeah, you need to use a lot less propellant to remain in space. <laughs> and if you've got a pipeline full of propellant, try saying that while you're pissed. Um, yeah, if you've got a pipeline full of propellant, then you, you just need to pipe your hydrogen and oxygen along it. And you can use that basically indefinitely. So it'd be like doing electrolysis on the ground to drive the hydrogen and um, then, you know, pumping up oxygen as well. And... Um, you know, th those aren't super cheap to buy or to, you know, make. <laughs>
if you know what I mean. Yeah, like making a batch of hydrogen, I guess, that like, uses a lot of electricity. Making uh, oxygen, yeah, but energetically intensive. So it'll use a lot of energy, but I mean, for God's sake, it's a space elevator. It was always going to at least use electricity, you know? I mean, it would have used a lot of electricity to match the rocket launches, I suspect. But, um, yeah. It's a conspicuous advantage of the technology. It allows us to get things to and from space, crucially back from space as well, right? So we can start doing things like mining in space and yeah, bringing back um, commodities that we need, like these rare earth metals that we might find out in asteroids. So yeah, that, that's one big advantage to building this device, this machine. It's worth spending the fuel on. That's, that's basically my opinion on it. <laughs> Maybe we can even use sails in the mesosphere to, to take advantage of these, um, these 150 mile an hour vertical winds. Um, or something like that. I don't know. But um, yeah, it's very stark, very cold up there. Um, the, the air is very thin. It's really rather an alien kind of environment. I love the idea of going up to the mesosphere out in a pressure suit <laughs> and seeing what it's like. <clears throat> seeing, for instance, Aurora Borealis up close. You can see that up there. Imagine that. How beautiful seeing that out of the, wi out of the window of a capsule even. You know, just sort of seeing it up close, but going out onto one of these stages on the, on the whole thing. Rocket engines. <laughs> yeah, it could be beautiful. It would be beautiful. It, yeah. Beautiful sights. That a sunset in the mesosphere or something. something gorgeous like that. So worth doing. It's worth attempting. I think. I don't I don't suspect this initial tower to the end of the stratosphere to the beginning of the mesosphere is going to I don't think we'll regret spending the money on that. Think about even like tourism and wherever it's placed, I mean it might you know, in, inspire people to come to come and see it and take pictures of it, and that'd be good for at least for the local economy in the area near where it is. Like, think about what this tower will look like. It will, it'll look like a parabola, going all the way up in a curved trajectory. Beautiful, I think. I think the idea of this is beautiful. Yeah, I think it'll be a beautiful thing. <laughs> it look it look like aliens have landed. Yeah. But, well. It would look like next generation technology. It would look like we we take technology a bit more seriously. I think is what it would look like. It would have a kind of a unique quality to its look. I think something like the LHC, in the way of it, yeah. It's kind of singular. But yeah, this um, and it opens up space. It opens up space for doing a hell of a lot more up there and for sending a lot more people up there and for um, exploiting space for its uh, its commercial potential, you know, its, it's um, potential for for being a, a place of business and a place of industry and yeah, the industrial applications of space. That's, that's really what this is going to open up, the space elevator technology. And I think if it can be if it can be demonstrated, I think it can be done relatively cheaply eventually. But the initial one is going to cost a huge amount of money. The first one to get it working. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, yeah, 150 billion might be a low estimate, actually. It might cost more than that. I don't know. It might cost 200 billion. It's over budget. I don't know is the answer. There's something stretching through space. Why do we need an elevator cable stretching to geostationary orbit? Do you see what I mean? What, tens of thousands of kilometres of cable and something's going to go along that in space? Well, it's just easier to send rockets. It's way easier to send rockets <laughs> than it is to have something travelling at, at 30 kilometres or something, kilometres an hour along a cable. It'll take months to get anywhere. So, I mean...
yeah. I don't know what the thinking behind that is exactly. But maybe like with station stud along it and um, power lines. And yeah, like infrastructure like that. Then again, sending power through space is probably easier using microwaves, isn't it? A power grid, yeah, be a microwave power grid. I am rambling. <laughs> but yeah, okay, I'm going to cut this video short. Um, thank you very much for watching. It's the latest in the space elevator. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.